What's up fellas? So this is the long awaited sequel to how to get more pull ups, the final answer. How to get a V taper. I like to break it down into the base and then things that make that base exceptional. The base is obviously lat width. You're gonna also have your upper back size, but also your core definition. On top of that, the rear delts, side delts, and low key your triceps are really underrated and contribute to the V taper substantially. So we're gonna talk about how to build each of those muscles categorically which by the way, fellas, if you're a big mover, someone that likes to horse around weight, getting all those muscles bigger are gonna get you really strong. So strength-minded fellas, you listen up as well. We're gonna kick things right off with the lats, but I'm not gonna spend too much time on it just because I made pull-ups the final answer. Watch that video. I have three programs, beginner, intermediate, and advanced that you could use to get the, all the lat growth that you're gonna need to acquire a V-taper. One thing I will say is, is that if you connect better with a barbell row as opposed to a weighted pull-up variation, just swap the two out. Now for core definition, I need whoever has not taken the hard weighted ab training pill to take the hard weighted ab training pill. That is extremely important, not only just for V taper, all, you know, fuck all that, for functionality and for strength in general. So if you're interested in any of those things, you need to train your core hard and heavy and often. Specifically for aesthetics, we're gonna focus on the low back and the obliques, the muscles that you can see from the lat spread from the back definition in that area is going to draw the eyes in. What exercises do I use? Well, in general, I'm going to give you guidance so that you can select these movements for yourself. And then I'm going to recommend them because it's a lot more important to me that you know what the fuck you're doing as opposed to just blindly following what I'm saying to you. But in general, in terms of how you select your movements, just pick an exercise that where you do it, you feel your obliques the next day, you feel them in the midst of the movement, that's gonna look different for everybody specifically, but in general, you can't go wrong with doing a little Rocky style sit up with a crunch at the top. There's also gonna be people that don't even need to do that. Like myself, for example, I get a really good oblique contraction just from doing GHD sit ups. And something that I've been experimenting with recently is something that I got from my man Faz Lifts. It's a style of cable crunch that he really likes. I tried it and it felt tremendous. The cool thing is though with those fast lift style crunches is that you can even put a little twist roo action at the top to recruit your obliques a little bit more if you need to do that. All right, spinal erectors. Some of my favorite exercises for the low back specifically are ones that come with a high stimulus and a low fatigue. I love some conventional deadlifts and honestly, that's what I want most of y'all to start off with. But if you're already conventional deadlifting somewhere else and you just want a little bit of extra volume, you can't go wrong with filling that in with back extensions. I really like snatch grip barbell back extensions or anything where you're holding a bar in your hand in general, just because that's also going to recruit your upper back, your traps, your rear delts a little bit. They get a little bit of a stretch as well. It's a big bang for your buck movement, but it also is a very potent stimulus on the lower back. My personal favorite hip hinge, honestly, most of y'all probably know is the RDO. I like doing those with the paws at the bottom that pause at the bottom is gonna increase the time under tension. You still get a really good stretch reflex, so you're still getting the benefits of doing an RDO in the first place, but the time over tension being so much higher is gonna cook your lower back that much more. Don't skip your freaking hip hinges, man. You need to do them. Now, in terms of hip hinges, I don't necessarily recommend. Look, man, get it how you live. So if you have some sort of injury that prevents you from doing like an RDO or conventional deadlift, but you can do a trap bar deadlift, Far be it for me to tell you not to do that because you do what you can. But we really wanna pick movements that stress the target muscles the best. And a trap bar deadlift is not gonna stress the lower back as well as a conventional RDO or a back extension, it just is what it is. Same thing kind of applies to sumo, you know, depending upon your leverages, of course, but all things being equal, person to person, it is not going to stress your lower back as much as if you were to do an RDO or conventional deadlift or back extension. All right, now upper back, specifically like your traps, your rhomboids, those muscles that give your back that pop and that definition towards your neck. I could tell you to hit your hip hinges and your rows. In fact, that is exactly what I want you to do at a base and at a minimum. So hit your freaking barbell rows, hit your hip hinges often, like twice a week. But there's some noteworthy things that I have discovered recently that I want to talk about just to give you some extra tools in the toolbox. Now, first and foremost, dumbbell seal rows. I've been doing those for a long time, but funny story, the fat pad that I use to increase the range of motion on my bench so that I can do them at home is so wide, I need to pull the dumbbells out, kind of like a reverse fly almost, to
to get the amount of range of motion that I need to feel my back working. What I found is, is that that just stresses my back, specifically my upper and mid back so much more. Also, the peak contraction is a lot higher for the same. I don't know the biomechanics is what I'm saying to you. I'm just telling you the sensation and what my body does, okay? It's funny because the second thing that I'm gonna talk about confirmed somewhat why it works the way that it does. But again, I was watching a Faz Lifts video where he was talking about the Kelso Shrug. It's basically you get on a cable row and you move your scaps back and forth. And that almost felt exactly like the Dumbbell Seal Row, at least that top action. So that's something that I've been including as well recently. What's really good about the Kelso Shrug is that you're not limited by anything other than your upper back's ability to stretch and contract and then your grip, which you can navigate that just by using some Versa grips or straps or whatever. Now, if we're gonna talk about upper back, I gotta dance with the girl that brought me. I really like reverse pec deck. It's obviously a rear delt exercise, which we're gonna cover in a second, but I feel a tremendous traps and upper back contraction Kind of, again, for the same reason, on a Kelso Shrug, on that style of dumbbell seal row, you're pinching the heck out of your fucking upper back, bro. Like, it's gonna feel tremendous. And a rear delt fly on a reverse pec deck is gonna feel the exact same way. Now, for rear and side delts, I made how to get massive delts the final answer. That's gonna lay the foundation of what I want you to do. It comes with a delt destruction protocol or whatever corny name I gave it. It's cool, but it's also a little corny. Just like with the upper back though, I'm gonna refer you to some resources, but also talk about some noteworthy things that I have tried recently. Again, these are just things to try on top of the base that I want you to lay with the things that I talk about and how to get delts, the final answer. Something that I really like though, that I have tried not only at this point for myself, but for fellas that I've worked with, is just Widowmaker rear delt flies, bro. I have classically always rated that exercise pretty low compared to a power raise in something like a reverse pec deck. But when I tried it like this at the suggestion of my boy Sam, my rear delts felt like basketballs afterwards. I feel like exercises that focus on that peak contraction where you're not really getting a whole lot until you finish the movement, really benefit from really high reps. I did that to 40 reps and I didn't need to do anything else for rear delts that day. They were cooked, okay? All right, last but not least, before we touch on two more brief topics and then I'll let you go triceps triceps are super underrated for a v taper and in general big triceps will make you strong and let you lift big weights but aesthetically they make your v taper look incredible posteriorly right so they add so much width to it specifically the long head but really all heads of the tricep get all freaking three heads of the tricep as big as you can it's just a lot of people neglect the long head by not isolating it but again the foundation is gonna be things that I have talked about on this channel and bemoaned at this point. Dual rope pushdowns, finding an overhead tricep exercise that works really well. I made a video talking about what some of my favorites are, how to modify exercises that don't work well for you. So again, watch that. But something noteworthy that I have tried recently is just giving yourself a few seconds rest after you reach failure on tricep rope pushdowns and then banging out however many more reps you need to finish your rep goal for that set. So this is just my opinion. I feel like triceps need to be punished. You can really beat the crowd out of them, bro. And that's how I like to do it myself. So if I have like, for example, three sets of 10 to 15, and my first set is 15, my second set is 15, but it was absolutely brutal. And I get to like 12 reps on my last set, I'm gonna give myself like five, 10 seconds rest and bang out those last three reps just because, again, the triceps need to be punished for them to grow the best in my opinion. That's just something that I've tried recently. Strength enjoyers. I'm a strength enjoyer too. I told you I'd give you something to chew on. Here's why I think that you should approach some things more like a bodybuilder at times. You wanna get good at compound movements. You like horse and weight around. Even just in terms of making sure that your form is tight, getting things like bigger lats, bigger rear delts, a larger upper back, bigger triceps, obviously, are going to help improve all of those things. When it comes to deadlifts, keeping the bar tight to your body, a lot of lat strength comes into play with that. You get bigger, stronger lats, you're gonna have an increased capacity to be able to do that. Bigger triceps equals a bigger bench press, bigger shoulders, rear delts, that's gonna help on overhead pressing. All of these things contribute 
to adding on to your compound movement. So if you want to look at it as, look, my physique is a side effect of my training and that's how I view it, that's perfectly fine and I have total respect for that. But just getting bigger muscles in general is going to help your compound movements, even if it's the show muscles like delts, for example, that's going to help your presses. It's going to help your rows. It's going to help all the things that you're doing to get stronger. Now for the hypertrophy enthusiasts, there's someone that is inevitably thinking in their head, there is no flipping way you did not mention pullovers. I think there was even a fella in like a community post that said, bro, you better talk about pullovers. Listen, guys, I think that those are an excellent exercise. I can see what they have done in other people's physiques in terms of expanding their rib cage, which will obviously make your V taper that much sharper. But here's why I don't do them specifically. And it's not because I have a problem with the exercise. It's not because it doesn't work. In fact, if you can make room for it in your program, it has a lot of benefits. My Jack's colleagues have made videos talking about their benefits. And I think though those are great videos and I agree with them. So track on what I'm saying to you. If you can fit it in your program, I personally cannot fit it in my program because I'm doing so much work to bring up weaknesses. And I'm also doing a lot of work to keep my strengths to strength and improve those as well. Natural hypertrophy and me were just talking this one time, right? He saw me doing pullovers on my Instagram story and he hit me. He was like, bro, I see you took the pullover pill. Congratulations. Da -da -da. And I said, hell yeah, man, I love pullovers. I'm going to do them three times a week and da -da -da. And shortly after that conversation, I did not do pullovers for it had to have been like two months ago, bro. I haven't done pullovers since we talked about them. And it wasn't because I did not feel the benefits in doing them. In fact, when I was doing them, I felt my rib cage expanding. I think every time I talk about pullovers, I talk about how they expand your rib cage and they work your lats. And then I end up not doing them because I'm trying to put them in a session where I'm already doing so much to improve my strength and physique that I just can't fit in anything else. Now, there's something key that I wanna teach you there. If you can't do something and train hard at it, in addition to everything else you're doing, you don't need to have that thing in there. And that just because you aren't doing something that works well, doesn't mean that you can't get still results, right? So obviously I still have a barnyard door back, right? I still have a thick back, okay? Me not doing pullovers is not de detrimenting my V taper. So that's the fear of missing out that I want y'all to not worry about so much because you can still do things and get results even if you can't do everything at once that works well. That little bro talk aside, bro, as usual with these videos, I haven't eaten yet. So I'm gonna leave y'all guys with what we've talked about. I hope you enjoyed, it was a lot of fun. I'm gonna go get some chow. Y'all let me know if you have any questions. Watch these videos that I referenced in the midst of this video now that you're done with this one. And I will see y'all guys later. Have a good day.